Greetings and welcome to Channel 7 Horizon Online News. It's March 25, and I'm Edmund Griddles. Yesterday, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner and Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke appeared together before a House committee to answer questions and discuss what could and should happen following the AIG executive bonuses episode. <clears throat> In the session, Geithner said that AIG highlights broad failures of our financial system and made it clear that he believes that the government, notably people in positions such as his, should be given more power over financial companies, even possibly taking control of financial institutions and running them. Bernanke added that if AIG had failed, it could have resulted in a 1930s-style global financial and economic meltdown with catastrophic implications for production, income, and jobs. This reporter, having actually watched part of the session, understood the gravity of the events that were taking place, but had difficulty paying attention to the discussions on account of the utter boringness of a House committee meeting. This reporter also thinks that viewership of these sessions would skyrocket if subtle additions were made, such as having jousting tournaments sprinkled in between questions. With tigers. That said, this reporter thinks that he may finally understand why he's not allowed to run for any sort of public office ever again. A U.S. National Cancer Institute study has found that eating a lot of red meat during your lifetime increases your risk of cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, stomach ulcers, and a variety of other nasty and probably painful things. The study goes on to say that if Americans would cut back on red meat, up to 11% of men's lives and up to 16% of women's lives could be saved. Of course, the study isn't without its critics, many of which cite the notoriously unreliable self-reporting that was used in the study, the uncertainty of the risk actually stemming from red meat, or simply just extra calories, and the confusion that the study brings, since red meat is absolutely delicious. NASA recently conducted a contest to submit and vote on a name for the new wing of the International Space Station, and came out with a winner. The winning name? Colbert, as in Stephen Colbert, the host of the Colbert Report. The victory comes after Colbert were told viewers to submit and vote for his name. While NASA has made clear that the poll is non-committal, they have said that they will put the name a little higher on their list. NASA's own suggestion for the wing, Serenity, came in second, and in third came My Yearbook, which lost due to the sole fact that one has to actually think very hard to come up with a worse name for something that will travel into space. I myself meditated for hours on the subject, and the only word I could possibly fathom to be a worse fit, much less a combination of two separate words, was Coldplay. Coldplay! And now for your local news. Thanks, Todd. And now for your local weather. Hello, and welcome to the weather. Today, as you may have noticed, the rest of your normal news with Edmund Griddles has been cut short. So, as in effect from right now, I am taking over the news. So, today we will have more weatherness, more coldness, more hotness, more awesomeness, and more general all-around precipitation and sunlight and dark light and everything that is weatherly and great. So, it's me, your Hessian College weather puppet, and my bestest friend, the ethnocentric weather map. And we're just going to be talking to you for, like, a long time today. Um, also, today is... And that's all we have for Channel 7 Horizon Online News. Until next time, keep passing all your classes and stay away from ill-tempered animals.